Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us. Looks like we have uh, just a couple people on, but hopefully we'll get some more. Uh, thank you for joining us for Uptime, Uptime Community. Uh, my name is Greg Messina, and um, this is the first live stream for Uptime Community. And uh, we have uh, a guest and co-host. I want to say co-host, but really co-brother in, in Christ uh john brother john boucher brother hey. john just say how are you brother how's it going i'm doing great i'm doing great thank you so much uh for for coming on we're going to do a lot more of these and um you know we're we're not here to uh what are we here what are we doing here what are what are we Lift up our yeah we're, what are we trying to accomplish well are we trying to do another online church, so to speak, uh, you know, just to, you know, let people know that, you know, there's another way to, you know, gather together? Mm, yes and no. Uh, we're not just an, we're not really an online church, but you can, we can consider ourselves that we're more of a community of Christ, of believers who are looking for the Lord's return. Mm. Uh, Hallelujah. The Lord said, you know, we, we must watch and and pray that we are uh to escape these things that are to come and this is in the book of luke and we know what time times we're in john brother brother and john john and myself know that the time is near that we are proclaiming the return of our lord jesus christ and that it is an imminent return it is not something that we should be saying okay we're going to you know maybe get through a few things here a few things there no, we are here to proclaim not just the good news of Jesus Christ, but his return, his imminent return. And that is the primary focus of this online body. And for anyone who needs to uh, get some more information and some more uh, uh, teaching on that, we're here to give that information to you because the, the Lord has put it on my heart and specifically Brother John Boucher's heart that we, we need to proclaim his his return and that it is imminent and you need to be watching you need to be ready uh, yeah. at all, all times because when our mind goes elsewhere in terms of okay well we can call tomorrow another day we may not have tomorrow correct tomorrow may not be the uh, another day uh, and that can go for anyone I mean you know whether you believe in a pre-trib mid-trib or post-trib rapture you don't know you're not guaranteed tomorrow anyway. In your, in your life. life. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. So, uh, you know, make sure that you, you're always constantly together with the true vine. The true vine being Jesus Christ, our one and only Lord and Savior, who came to die for our sins on the cross of Calvary. And if you're familiar with the John 3.16 verse, you know that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him 
will not perish, but have eternal life. So uh, what we're going to do today, we're going to we're going to uh, have communion together. Um, so I just want to let you know off the bat, in, in case you have some bread and uh, wine and you don't have to have a grape, you know, whatever grape juice, you could have water, any type of bread. If you don't, that's OK, too. Uh, you know, you're you're here with us. You're you're representing the body of Christ and God knows your heart, you know, Uh so we plan on doing more of these. We plan on doing it each weekend. Uh, God has laid it on my heart. This is a, a project that has been long time in coming. And I've known Brother John for a long time. And we've actually conversed quite a bit together uh, on the topic of the harpazo or the rapture of the church, um, including uh, doing a, a project together, a video project, which um, Maybe one of these times we can we can show that too to the audience. I think they they appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so uh, again, it, it is very it we're it's the first broadcast. Um, I don't expect that many uh, viewers. I, I honestly I did not do much promotion for this, but brother John has a uh, YouTube channel, and he has quite a bit of followers, and you can reach him at Watchman for that great day. Uh, that is his YouTube uh, profile, his handle. Mm. And, uh, brother, thank you for the work that you do for the kingdom and for proclaiming uh, the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brother Greg. Uh, can I just add something in here? Absolutely. What a great name, Uptime Church. I mean, you can't get any better than that. That's just beautiful because it, it represents the moment that it's time for the church to go up it's you can't get any better than the name that's a holy spirit <laughs> anointed name i'm telling you because i the other day i was talking to my wife about it and i'm like uptime church it's time for the church to go up <laughs> <laughs> amen brother amen amen go up show up get in the presence of the lord i mean it all fits you know these are the days these are the moments Right now, literally, we could be doing a broadcast and be caught up out of here. That's the kind of imminence that Brother Greg just shared with us, that it's time. This is not only up time, it's time for the church to go up, but it's it's with all of the uh, signs that we're told in Matthew and Mark and Luke to watch for, they're all happening simultaneously around the world. And if you don't see that we're literally at the moment of the time of the harpazo, because no man knows the day or the hour, all right, that's, that's the only way we're going to know the seasons by knowing the way the world is reacting to all the things and that's what i get into studying and and looking at and i'm sure many of you do as well so it just it's a peace that we have in the midst of a great storm that is raging and is the beast is standing before us brothers and sisters those of you that are not uh, born again right now that are possibly watching this uh this broadcast uh, we'll offer uh, a way for you to come into his presence at the end of this uh, this time. But all throughout this time of, of us reaching out to you, because it's an outreach. And it's also, it's not just for brothers and sisters in Christ, although that's the community that we're reaching out to. We're also reaching out to those that might be um, uh, admonished to come and watch. All right? So all of you brothers and sisters out there, Share with your friends, send the links, tell them that we're going to gather here on, on uh, Sunday mornings at 12. And if they can appear, if they even just want to check out what's going on, according to the Christian side or, or the biblical side of uh, these events that are taking place, that's where we're, we're, we want to bring this information to you so that you'll get a better understanding of, uh, of what's happening in the biblical sense, not so much as the worldly sense, although we compare the world to what the Bible says. So that's the that's the effort that we're going to put out here on on these these uh, these gatherings. All right, and since it, it is perfect that we really can't meet in 
in churches because a lot of churches do not promote what we talk about. They do not give you indication of what is about to happen, literally in the moments ahead of time. If we even are blessed enough to show up here next Sunday, there's just so much to talk about. There's no way we can talk about everything in a, in a what is it, about an hour we're going to be on, brother? Hour and a half? One hour, yes, yeah, one hour. Mm -hmm. So there we go. So without, a, without any further ado, let's give it back to you, brother. Well, thank you for that, John. Uh, brother, I, I, um, it's so true. When you brought up the, the name Uptime, uh, one of the things that came to my mind, and we spoke about this, uh, was the fact that about a year or two ago, uh, there was a point in which the Me Too movement with women uh, happened to have uh, taken, uh, taken root into the Oscars and the Academy Awards and the, the celebrities as well, starting to wear pins that said Time's Up. Uh, these were Time's Up pins. And um, I remember seeing that and I remember it was very interesting because something came to my mind when I, I saw that and I said, well, this is interesting because some people are within that area and I'm not saying everyone, but some people in that uh, who are high up there and part of the elite or the club, the one percenters, they tend to have sort of kind of signals, if you will. Um, and these signals, I believe, uh, can sometimes be broadcast on national television. And I think that the Times Up did not just signify the Me Too movement in terms of you know women being abused and, and being silenced, but I also think that it was a signal to some of those people out there that things were changing. There's going to be a major shift going on in the world. And I can't, I can't validate that, but I feel in my, in my spirit uh, self, spirit man, that it is, and it was something that was signaling the time being uh, close to, you know, things happening within the world. And, and sure enough, Look where we are now with with the uh, you know with with the lockdown with the coronavirus uh, that this stuff is happening right now and you know this was not happening much you know too long ago with with the times up so I saw that pin and I saw it signifying but if you flip it around you flip it around it becomes up time mm. up times but I figured okay now for christians for believers it's a, it's a it's a signal of okay it's time to start looking up i mean it's always been time to look up right so but this should have been a signal also all right i like the way this thing was phrased i think like the way i could it could be used to flip that around because people can say see it in two different ways in, in different light and it's all it's mainly about perspective isn't it brother john you could it's, say times times up to someone and look as like a kind of a judgment call on on people, or you could say you know you could look at it as way whoa okay this is a, something we should be looking at in terms of if we're getting closer and closer to the Lord's return because if the global elite have their agenda, then the Lord has his own has his agenda and he wants his he wants his uh, followers i, I think i lost you brother don oh, you're back you you cut it started again from where you were the global agenda yeah so you know when the global agenda has their you know their phrasing and their meanings behind it bro brothers and sisters in christ also should realize we have our communication we have our body we have you know our way of of fellowshipping and encouraging and edifying one another, right. build each other up and saying, listen, we shouldn't be saying, you know, fearing this. This is something to be rejoicing about because as the years go on, the time, you know, we see the years going up, but the years going up is really a countdown to the Lord's return. Right. Can I share something, brother? Yes. What, what yes. you're saying 
about the Me Too and the Time's Up it, it, and being a sign and a signal of the elite and the, the upper percentage and all that, that fits perfectly into the days that we're living because that was their uh, uh, sign, if you will, or, or the warning uh, that, that it would be time to start you know, preparing to go underground. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is where uh, if you've never heard that there's underground cities, all you have to know is even if you just watch a couple of YouTube, just type in a YouTube uh, uh, underground um, cities or, or storage facilities underground, and you'll, you'll get these videos, all right? There mm -hmm. are places where a truck or a trucker can drive from California all the way to Boston underground without ever coming up to the surface. So this is this is major what you just said with the signs of these people going, you know, to give them a warning, right? Mm -hmm. If we read it in the in Revelation, all we have to do is go to Revelation chapter six and go down to verse 15. Mm. And, and in there it tells us the kings of the earth, the great men, uh, the rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men, and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. This is a this is where the the elite and the people with the uh, the wish to to remain here for what is coming upon this earth and to bear it out and to make it through and to be protected against uh, radiation and all the things that are going to happen as you read through Revelation, the trumpets and the seals and you name it. So, right. so those things exist and it tells us they do by exactly that verse because it's not just, it's not just, uh, it's the kings, they're elite. Anyone that would be a king today would be an elite, a, a leader of a country, let's say. And you got the the uh, the great men the great men of the nations the the moguls the the, the uh, ceos of which 219 stepped down in january from their positions in global corporations so this is all major signs that something is about to happen uh brothers and sisters and the chief captains what are chief captains the the generals the admirals all of the leaders of the military these are the big uh the higher ups and they take with them the mighty men. Those are all the forces. If you look at uh, uh, Cheyenne Mountain, which is where they keep NORAD, which uh, watches over the earth pretty much through satellites and different things to, to protect America. But they have, uh, back in March sometime, they went to a certain level of uh, DEVCON, which allowed them to go in and they are sealed up in there now. So these men have already, the mighty men, the great men, and chief captains, they're all underground now, leading from underground, not necessarily from a ship somewhere or from a, a base somewhere. Mm. They're, they're definitely on a base, and they're definitely, uh, who knows if they're on a ship somewhere, but they're, they're underground. They're protected right now, these, these great men, the rich, you know, the free, and all this. So this is just evidence of what's going on, okay? Yeah. Oh, it, it definitely is. There is plenty of evidence of uh, where we are in the end times, especially with what's going on with climate change, with the earthquakes, uh, you know, the pestilences. You know, Jesus spoke about these signs in the Olivet Discourse. Uh, you know, Matthew, specifically ch chapter 24, uh, you know, and, and he did say when you see these signs happen in, in the book of Luke, actually, that he says, look. when you see these signs, look up, lift up your heads and know yeah, that brother. your redemption is near, when they that your redemption is near. So, yeah, this is something we, we have to, you know, take into account. Um, and I don't see many. Uh, well, I can't say I can't see many, but I, I don't see churches actually getting into that much. Uh, and it's one of the one of the reasons why we've we've started what we started here um, specifically to address that and to keep to keep watch it's it's not listen we should not feel ashamed in any way to want to be with our lord and savior okay um, if we feel like we're being drawn back into the world and there's something else we're missing that's part of the world or world 
Lee, then I would start just, I would question your relationship. I, I'd, I'd have to start saying, listen, you, you need to, to start okay. thinking about why do I feel this way? Okay. Mm -hmm. Because we should feel drawn to our Lord and Savior and want to be with him. We should want that just automatically. Uh, yeah, there's things that life has to offer and God is good and God has given us thing, you know, has blessed certain people here um, with certain things, finances, uh, houses, uh, you know, uh, family, you name it. Um, yeah, some people are, and brothers and sisters are blessed. Uh, however, if we start thinking about our future, our own future, and where we want to go with it, then we start to put this uh, idea in our own head as to how we we want to plan that out, how we want to map out our own future. Right. And you could say easily, no, no, that's not, you know, I don't do that. But it, in all honesty, yeah, it is. We we um, we should have nothing here on earth that should make us want to be attached to this world. Okay. John, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. James four tells us, you know, that anyone who's friends with the world is an enemy of God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. So, you know, I'm not saying we can't enjoy the things that God blesses us with. That's not where I'm going with this. Right. What I am saying is if you feel that any point in your heart, like there, you know, you don't want to leave before, let's say some a brother of, of mine had mentioned to me once before, it, he was afraid of dying before his time. And I thought about that for a second. I said, hmm, dying before your time. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Because I thought we were on God's clock, <laughs> not yeah. our own clock. <laughs> OK, we're not on our own clock, folks. We're not on our own clock. And if there is a point, what I'm saying is I'm not condemning you. I'm not judging you. What I'm saying is if there's any point and you feel that way. Let us let us know. We'll pray for you because it's it's partly uh, the flesh. It's partly it could be partly the enemy, the spirit, our spiritual enemy, the adversary or Satan. And that could that could be what's driving you to feel that way. But there should be nothing that makes us not want to be with our Lord and Savior. And Brother John is a good example of this because he really, I mean, God bless his heart. He really wants to get out of here. <laughs> and that, you, make that, you make that very uh, evident on your, your channel, uh, watching for that great day. And you know what? Listen, brother, you know, for what it for what it is. We, we, we know we don't know the day nor the hour. However, we know we're close because Amen. Uh, it's, it, there's, there's sections in Scripture, and we'll get into this uh, at other times, God willing, that, you know, we're not in the dark. The brothers and sisters are not in the dark, and Jesus won't come as a thief for us. But he will come as a thief for those who are not watching, who are part of the world, who are worldly. And we want to make sure that you're not one of those people. Go ahead, brother. Brother Greg, I think we'll do a, a, a tag team here. I think what I'll do is I'll read what you were talking about before we got on here about Matthew. I can read it, and like you explained it to me. So I'll read it like I read it to you. You explain it to the people, okay? So I'll Okay, what, well, let me, let me share, let me share um, the screen so they can see, read along with us. All right, Matthew 24, I guess we start at 6 or 4. We start at 4. Okay, so we're we're now going into Matthew chapter 24. Uh, you should all be able to see this. Actually, I'm going to bring it full screen so you can see it even better. I'll be, I'll, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Is this out of the King James? Because I'm not reading it off the screen. I won't be able to read. That's too small for me. Can you see that now? Is that better? Let's see. I'll tell you in a second. I'll make my screen larger. Okay, that's better. Sure. Okay, so King James Version is the version we're going with. Okay, and we're going to go four. ahead, brother. You can, you can. We'll start at four. 
And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And we shall hear, and ye shall hear, all you shall hear of wars, rumors of wars. Uh, see that ye are not troubled. So don't be troubled, don't be worried. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. What end is he talking about, Brother Craig? <laughs> Well, the end that he's speaking of specifically, specifically now, is the end of the church age. Ah. The end of the church age, not the end as in of the, the world. end of the world. Okay. Right. That's not where he's that's not where he's going with this. Okay. So go ahead, brother. All right. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, which are diseases, which we could say the coronavirus is definitely a disease, whether it's man-made or not, it's, it's you know, <laughs> it's a disease, pestilences, and there's been many, okay, down through the ages, the Black Plague and all the different, the, the Spanish flu, and earthquakes mm -hmm. in different places, and we know if we're watching anything about earthquakes, they have been off the charts lately, maybe not in magnitude, but some of them are pretty high, but there's a lot more than there used to be, all right? So that just gives us indication, again, how close we are to the end of the age of grace, what, what Brother Greg just said here. So verse 8 says, and all these things are the beginnings of sorrows. All these things, the earthquakes, the famines, the pestilences. So these things could have been going on since Christ, okay? You know, it's not like all of a sudden they just start happening and we know, but we are seeing the exponential increase, which is what we would see at the end of days or the, the end of the age. So verse 9 says, Then shall they deliver you up and be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall, arise, shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's sad, you know, the love of many. The love of many speaks of people that have compassion, even just worldly wise, even just in the world. There's a lot of brothers and sisters not even saved yet or people, the, the creation of God, let's say that have humanitarian compassion for each other. And that's the love that we're talking about, as well as Christian love, which is agape, which they love, can grow cold. Mm. So we have to be very careful that we're not cold to one another and, you know, be, oh, well, okay? We don't ever want to take an attitude towards another brother or sister that way. We might not like what they're doing, where they're going, what they believe as end times, they don't, teach a certain way or whatever, it offends you. You don't have to watch them. You don't have to worry about it. That's right. But, but you do have to love these people because they're our brothers and sisters, and we're all, anyone that professes Jesus Christ has that Holy Ghost in them and, you know, don't want to diss the Holy Spirit, right? That's so right. So don't diss your brother or sister, you know, love them and forgive them if they've offended you, but that's important. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but... Here we go, Brother Greg. You take it from here. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. The same shall be saved. Very, very true. So this is very, uh, very interesting because I believe, and so do you, Brother John. Right. That scripture answers scripture. Right. Does it not? Uh, we have a lot of answers to this very question topic right here in the same passage in the same chapter read, about the end and what the end really signifies read the next verse because i think i stopped too soon that you have to read verse 14 read it yes okay so verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations and okay. then the end will come up time <laughs> Woo! End of the age of grace. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, obviously what we see here is the answer 
to what he's referring to, what Jesus is referring to when he's talking to his disciples about the end and what the end actually is. He's not referring to the end of the world. He's talking about the end of the church age, the end of the ecclesia, the assembly uh, being being there, uh, being around in, in the on the earth. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll have, you know, a lot of theologians, I mean, some theologians will disagree with that. However, I mean, it's pretty clear cut and dry. Don't you agree, Brother John? I, I would say, <laughs> this, when, when you shared this with me, I always used to think that the end was the end of the, you know, at the end, of the end, you know, the end of the tribulation and all that. That's what that meant. The end, there's all at the end, then the end will come and all that. Right. But, that's what the next verse, if we read the next verse, really uh, it dictates, all right? Because it starts out, and this is the midpoint, supposedly, of the tribulation. Mm -hmm. So it starts out with the word, when, when ye, when ye therefore shall see. So it's not saying immediately uh, the end of the age of grace, then the abomination, it doesn't say that. It gives you a when you shall see. Now, this is where it gets interesting because of what it says in this verse. This is what, what gives the other credence, what gives all of what I just read and what, what Brother Greg is trying to share with us, that this is the end of the age of grace, which means the rapture happens. That's uptime. That's what that is right there. The next thing is when ye shall see, when ye therefore, all right? That is for people on the other side after the rapture. Those are for the unwise virgins, if you're not understanding unwise and wise versions. It's Matthew 25. You can go and read it. But Okay, when, I just want before you start that verse, I just want to clarify something to those people who say rapture is not in the Bible. Uh, we are specifically referring to the Greek word harpazo, which is being caught up, is, is the word for being caught up to God and his throne. And so uh, rapture actually comes from mm -hmm. the Latin Vulgate, and it's been transliterated and all that. So that that's a whole thing, different thing. But when we say rapture, we're referring to the Greek word harpazo. Right. Sorry, Brother John, go ahead. That's fine. Amen. Um, so then it starts out, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel. So you'd have to go to the book of Daniel to see what was spoken of it. All right, that is chapter uh, 12, verse 11, by the way. We won't go into that today because, and you know what? Let me just share this with you really quickly, uh, church, brothers and sisters, friends. Mm -hmm. Not everything that I'm saying goes along with the way that my brother Greg believes, but that's fine. I love my brother, and that's the whole thing is we all should love each other. Sometimes I say something and he's trying to tell me different. And I'm like, no, I'm set on that way of thinking. It doesn't mean I won't entertain it and think about it and, and maybe come to that way of thinking. It just means that I don't think that way at the time. So don't ever feel like because I'm saying something as my opinion that it's, it's Brother Greg or vice versa. Okay. We're all, we all have to learn and understand as we're, as we're led by the spirit. Let's put it that way. That's right. So, so, so if I say something and Brother Greg doesn't agree with it, he's not bound to agree with something I say, but he can he can understand what I'm saying. He may not believe that particular way. He might see it in a different way. That that to me is fine because none of us are going to have the perfect. Everything is going to be so pink, 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 pink with dot and and jot and tittles, you know. So. So anyway, so let me continue with this. So it's when you therefore shall see what was spoken of in the book of Daniel. Then it says, stand in the holy place. And then the very interesting thing that denotes this section is being at the time right after the rapture, these books are going to become outlawed. Believe it or not, these books, these New Testaments, there's going to be a book burning, let me tell you. People that find one of these things, it will be as bold to them because it will tell you. And there's why I'm telling you this, because it says in parentheses, and I never understood it until Brother Greg said, the end of the age of grace, and then when, when you shall see, that's down the road, whatever, okay, in, the, in, the, in this portion that's coming. It says, whosoever readeth, let him understand. 
Now, isn't that confusing to you? Because we're reading it, we're understanding it. It's the wars, rumors, of wars, famines, pestilences, the end of the end, and end, end, end. It's just telling yeah. it right there. But then it says, and when you see something. And then it goes on to say, you know, those that are in Judea. That's not Chicago or New York or California. That's those in Judea. Jerusalem Central. All right. So when yeah. you see this, let those people that have been left behind, unfortunately, because they did not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit never entered into their mind or thoughts because they didn't ever ask the Lord. They had a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof, which is the Holy Spirit. And this you find a lot in religious belief, and it's unfortunate, but it's more simple than man's religion will make it. It's a simple thing, and that we can, you know, adjust to to share this at the end of this video. And I'll let Brother Greg take it, but but you understand what what's going on here. That's so, so true. And uh, brother, it uh, it really is about studying, right? Studying the Word of God. Um, so and so, you you want to study and continue to study, but it's not just you leaning on our own understanding, in which sometimes and for the most part we really are we need to use be guided by the holy spirit because we can easily miss and and the majority and it's very interesting because the majority of people can easily miss that and we tend to go off on someone else's mainstream thought and viewpoint where we should be studying on our own uh, we're not saying that you need to, to believe us we're right. saying we're we're encouraging you to study, study right. the word of God, uh, right. to show thyself approved, right? right. Uh, so, uh, in fact, they should have a Bible when they're watching us, because that's part of being. When you go to church, you bring your Bible and you read it. You know, so that's what's good about the screen. Brother Greg can put it up on the screen so you can read it. But you really should have your own Bible, because those out there that are not born again, brother. They need to get a Bible. They need to break out their grandma's or their grandfather's Bible or their mom's or whatever, you know, and, and start to follow along in the, in their own book. That way they, they're not just looking at it on the screen thinking that, you know, well, we could have typed that in ourselves, you know. No. Amen. Your own Bible and, and read it. Amen. Uh, uh, so we are encouraging you to read. We're not saying take our word for it. Read, read for you. Oh. Uh, broke up a bit, brother. But we are using using God's word to justify and to to prove to you that listen, it the Bible answers the Bible. Scripture answers Scripture, and even in the New King James Version, and I'm not saying that I uh, promote or condone the New J King James Version. However, the New King James Version, some study Bibles of that version will even put that segregation there. Uh, of the end of the church age, they'll title it the end of the church age, which we just spoke about, and then go right into the tribulation period, which we also just spoke about, where it uh, starts at verse um, uh, verse 15, okay? Uh, I have seen this in New King James Version study, ver uh, study Bible. They actually segregate those two right there. So the, the theologians themselves actually segregated those two. However, somehow... Some way the enemy or somebody seeped in there, and now people are under, I mean, a lot of people are under this kind of spell, so to speak, saying, oh, the end, I, ha I must endure unto the end of the world. I must endure to the end of tribulation period to be saved. Since when is Jesus ever throughout scripture about our own merits and our own... Um, What's the word I'm looking for, John? <laughs> you know, our our own we, our own ways, our own ways. What? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, so how he doesn't expect us to get on this on our own. He doesn't expect us to get through any of this on our own, whether pre-trib or tribulation period. So, I know there are people who do believe in mid and believe in post-trib, and you know what? I just say for that, I just say continue to study. Okay, continue to study. Um, everything I've even tried to do in terms of 
proving uh, or disproving the pre-trib rapture, it, it's it's falling apart. It, it 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 exists. There is a group of believers that is taken um, prior to the tribulation period, and God willing, we're going to get into more study and and show that to you. But uh, for this study, I want you to know the difference between that section of verse. Uh, uh, four is it started four again? I'm sorry. Um, yeah. yeah, so starting from four to verse uh, 14. Right. Okay, there's a break. There's a break. There's a there's obviously a break there. And like I said, if you take a look at a new King James Version uh, study Bible, the theologians uh, they they actually segregate that for you. They they title that section for you the end of the church age and then they go right into verse 15 the tribulation period or during the tribulation period so what are we being saved from verse 13 right uh, i'm going to do this quickly because i do want to do um communion. i do want to do communion and so but he that shall endure unto the end and we we discussed what the end actually is when we go back up Thank right you. Yes, yeah. The end of age of grace. Yep. So, um, yeah. So the the age of grace. So if you endure into the age of grace, right? We're going to go through Jesus. Jesus tells us we're going to go through tribulation. We'll we'll have tribulation or affliction. It doesn't. He's referring to affliction when he says that people. It's not. He's not talking about go. We will go through great tribulation. He's saying we will have a affliction during right. the time of the age of grace because we're continuously doing the Lord's work and we're banging heads, you know, butting heads with the enemy. We are he's just rising. You know, we are swimming against the tide. Yeah. So, um, but the Lord is always with us. He's never, you know, he's never telling us that we're actually have to endure by ourselves. He wants, you know, he says, you know, uh, my yoke is easy. My burden is light, right? Take my yoke upon upon you uh, and and I will give you your, your soul's rest. I will give rest for your souls. Uh, you know, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we constantly need to be in tune with Jesus, continuously abiding in the Lord uh, up until that that time period of the end of uh, end of grace, so the end of uh, the church age. And what does he mean by being saved? I mean, does it mean by your own doing you're going to be saved by going right through the tribulation all the way to the end until he his second coming, his his return on the Mount of Olives? No, because obviously it's not by our own merits, our own deeds, our own works that we can do that. Right. He's can saying up until the age of grace, you're going to be saved out of Right. The great tribulation out of the great tribulation so i i hope this this study has helped you in, in somewhat and we'll we can get into it another time as well god willing and um yeah do you have any other uh one thing, one thing. On this study? just to just to give anybody that that uh a little more understanding that there is a, a rapture um and a day of escape it tells us right in Luke 21 that during these times, all right, the days we're living in right now are certainly the pestilence, the wars and rumors of wars. There's a lot of rumors going on about maybe Kim Jong-un now that he's dead or whatever, some, some kind of war breaking out. There's a lot of rumors of wars. But in Luke 21, it says, 21 and 34, and take heed to yourselves and at least any time your hearts be overcharged so don't let your hearts be overcharged even in what we just read matthew jesus said don't worry don't be troubled by what you see so that's a comfort right there that's a comforting and with the with the suffering and drunkenness like the world hey don't turn to alcohol to 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 kill your problems or to escape because you always wake up with a hangover anyway it doesn't ever get you out of the the truth okay and it says, and the cares of this world, so the day that that day comes upon you unaware. Then it says, for as a snare, see this hold, is. Hold on, brother John, let me bring this up. So you, what verse are you on, on 21? Uh, 21, 34 through 36. 34 through 36. Hold on, let me bring that up for you right now. Let's do that. 
So everyone can follow along with us. Good man. And then we'll do communion after this. Yeah. Right? Okay. Here we are. We're up. We're okay. going. Make it a little bigger. Whatever. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So, so that the, the, and the cares of this life, so that day, this is verse 34, right? The end of it. So that the cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Is not this virus, this whole thing, shut down the whole world right now? Is not what they're planning pretty much a snare? We read earlier that the kings and the great men and, and all that, uh, the, the free men, the bond men, the chief captains, all are going into their underground uh, fortresses and rocks and the dens is the way it says it in the Bible. This was well before they had luxury, uh, you know, undergrounds. But the next verse here is, watch ye therefore, and this is the proof of a escape or a rapture. Watch ye therefore. What are we doing today? We're watching. We're waiting. We're, we're anticipating what's about to happen. So watch ye therefore and pray. Pray always. Be ready. Pray always that ye may be accounted worthy. And the only way that anybody's accounted worthy is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen, brother? Amen. Amen. And, and to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Now that right there says the word escape. And I've never looked it up in the Greek, but it means to, basically it means to be caught up. It means to be caught away, to be removed from, okay, out of this time where all these troubles are going to culminate and even possibly in the next few months. So this is how close we are. I always believe that the rapture can happen at any moment, any minute, any day, any hour of that day. And that's the, that's the place I take right now. And that's where I've stood for quite a long time. But, but recently came back to that stand where it can happen any moment. It's not necessarily that we come to a, a Pentecost or anything else, although we do look at those times. So that's all I want to say, brother. Uh, you can take it. Amen. To do communion. Amen, Brother John. I, I'm glad you brought that verse up because it is important. And, you know, there will be others who will debate that verse being uh, the fact that there's there's an escape for uh, those who are in Petra or in, in Judea. Um, well, yeah. So they have, you know, they have an escape as well. There are there are multiple escapes yeah. going on. True. Um, but there's one rapture. There's one harpazo. But there are multiple gatherings to the Lord also during the tribulation period. So we can't forget about that also. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll go into some of that also, Lord willing, uh, at, at other, other, other times. Uh, perhaps we will even have a midweek uh, session. I'm going to discuss that with my brother and just, you know, keep an eye on the updates for Uptime Community. And we'll, uh, we'll let you know. Uh, but, yeah, so let's, uh, let's get into communion because um, God, God is so good. Um, you know, we, we, I, I've been a Christian since 2006. All right. Uh, I'm a baby uh, compared to John's, uh, you know, walk with the Lord and his, his time period. However, we're, we're still brothers. Um, we're brothers in Christ. And, uh, I, you know, I, I love my brother, John, uh, we'll both talk about, you know, uh, scripture. We'll get into scripture. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. Yeah. We, we do that. We, we come together and we may not agree on everything, but for the most part, we, we still, we believe in imminent, we believe in an imminent return Amen. of Jesus Christ, uh, our Lord and Savior. And if we didn't, there's always the possibility of something seeping in like, oh, well, maybe I could get this thing done and maybe I'll have a little more time to do this and this and that. And meanwhile, you know, we, we talk about the, the, the wise and foolish virgins, which we're not going to get into on this uh, this study. But there are five wise virgins and there are five foolish virgins. And don't right? be the foolish. <laughs> we don't want to be the foolish virgins, no. <laughs> uh, but, you know, doing something unawares. Listen, there is an imminent return of Jesus Christ, uh, my brothers and sisters. There is. Um, don't look... My, my final thoughts on this would be 
don't look for certain things that are happening either politically, uh, economically, stuff that's going on in the world specifically that you you need to pinpoint as okay, well, maybe we have a little more time because this happened or such and such did this. We sh we cannot be looking in that direction. We can't be looking that way at all. And we shouldn't be looking that way at all. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where we we need to keep our eyes and focused on Jesus, right? That's right. It's easy enough to say that. However, when it comes back to, you know, people getting out of church and going back, doing their family thing or this and that, right. what happens? It just, it, it kind of it goes in the back of your mind. And it's like, okay, well, I'm not saying that we both myself and brother john you know can constantly consistently 24 yeah. 7. yeah that's part of being a human brother you do you do but but it's a daily reckoning of christ in your life it's a daily moment by moment that's right if you find yourself off, you get yourself back to the thought of god and he could he sees everything we do so yes. we all fall short. there's no one saying that they're you know perfect because they're a certain way it's not about works it's about grace but, That's right. But we look to him and we, we stay focused on him. And he's part of, he's more than part of our life. He is our life. He's, Amen. He's given his for us. So go ahead and do communion, brother. I, I'm waiting for that. That's that'll be a all blast. right. All right, brother. All right. So uh, if everyone has their uh, their cracker, their bread, yep. uh, their matzah, I have yep. I have matzah, which there you go. Me too. And uh, oh, right. You know the story about the matzah? The, the, Go ahead, tell them the story. Tell well, them the story, brother. Don't don't hold it. The white is like the bread, and the 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 it looks like it's bruised. So Christ was bruised for our iniquity. He was bruised for our transgressions. He took our uh, sin to the cross. That's why at the Last Supper he broke this, which I've already broken. I got two little pieces. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, "I'm taking the, I'm doing the, I'm doing communion, brother. Do you want to do this or you want me to do it?" Amen. No, go ahead. I don't want to stop. Go ahead. He, 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 Jesus took the bread. He broke it. He says, "Take this and eat it, for this is my what? Body. This is my body." So that's what the matzah with the brown. It's like it's funny. It's a crack. It's a white cracker, but it's got brown on the edges and and it's it's got it you know over it. That was what he took, the bruising, the beating, the uh, breaking of his body, although not one of his bones was ever broken. You love that, don't you? Not one of his bones was ever broken. That fulfilled the prophecy. But Incredible. Take this and eat of it, all of you, for this is the bread of the new and everlasting covenant. So when you take this, don't do it unworthily. Take this as in respect of what Christ did for us on the cross, because he loved us so much, and I'm breaking up. I can't handle this. <laughs> it's so important, all right? So when so you eat cool. this, eat it remembering what Christ did for us. It's so important to do that. It's not just a, we're not just, it, it's not like a meal. It, it, this is a representation of, of what Christ did for us. So Amen. now, so shall we take this cracker and eat it and, and just, Thank God for that we have Jesus, that he was beaten and bruised for our transgressions, and he took it. Okay? Let's see. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. My, my How great is our God, brother? How great? Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. You want to do the juice? You know the, the story of the juice? Yeah, well, here, here's the thing. For, for he that eat and drink unworthily, yeah. eat and drink damnation upon himself for not discerning the lord's body mm. uh, so for this cause many are weak this is this is uh in in first corinthians uh chapter 11. so for this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep and when he mentions sleep he actually means fall asleep he means dead they die because uh if we judge ourselves we should not be judged so when we are judged, we're chastened, chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Mm -hmm. So when he says, where uh, Apostle Paul tells, tells the Corinthians, wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another and eat together and drink together. So 
if any man hunger, let him eat at home. Then you're not coming together until, you know, unless you, uh, you're going to be condemned, you know, that you don't come together as if it's just something that you're going to be doing just as eating and uh, whatever. So uh, the rest, he says, will I set in order when I come. So it's an incredible thing with the juice and the, the juice um, and you could have water. It represents the blood, yeah. the blood that was poured out for the sins of mankind. Yes. So when we drink of the blood of Jesus, we are doing this in remembrance of him. It is not the literal blood of Jesus. Right. It is, you know, it is not the literal body of Jesus. We are the body of Christ. That's right. We are the body of Christ. That's right. So once you receive Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior, you become you become a son or a daughter of the most high God in the kingdom. And we are the bride. we are the bride of Christ. And did, Amen. You, did you know that when when the I just saw a video recently and I have to mention it. Um, okay, real, real quick though, because we gotta before the wrath. Yep. And, it, and it's about this, about the covenant which is what Jesus gave his blood for us. So basically it's about the bride. It's a offering to the bride for to take this juice or this wine. And that was part of the uh, betrothal covenant. So when Jesus gave his life and told and did the thing at the last supper and told them to drink of this wine, because it was the, you know, I'm, I'm doing it again, brother. The, the wine of the new and everlasting covenant, which is his blood, both his body and his blood go together. And this was offered as the uh, as a betrothal to a new bride in the in the Galilean society. So, and and what it is is it's a dress rehearsal. It's a dress rehearsal. It's a dress rehearsal. Awesome. The time in which we will be with him and drink with him in his father's kingdom and so praise god hallelujah let's take and let's drink take and drink together thank you lord thank you hallelujah thank you so much for those who have attended uh for our live session today uh first session uh, first web webcast if you will, for uptime community. And um, we, we really want you to come back. Uh, we, we hope that you can also send this recording out to others uh, that uh, it, will, it will edify them. It will build them up. It will be a blessing to them. So uh, with that, thank you, Brother John. Do you have any uh, closing comments before we uh, go? Just thank you, Brother Greg, for, for starting this uptime up time it's going up time brother and we're close and and you know there'll be more um uh as we go like if we do come back next week and have another uh time lord willing more, lord willing there'll be more uh, uh, uh evidences i'll like to say of more towards the fact of how close we really are with different signs and things happening Mm -hmm. Amen. This, Amen. This first time, so we did what we did. It was great. It, it went by the Holy Ghost, and, and I'm so thankful for Brother Greg to, to do this. So pass this along, you know, post it on, on your social media, and uh, we'll, we'll get more people understanding how close we truly are. Amen, but, brother. Thank you so much for coming on with us. Oh, it's All right. Uh, we, will, we will again talk about uh, doing something midweek. I'm not sure it will be this midweek, but um, Lord willing, it will happen, and we'll have two of these in, in one week. So, yeah. uh, again, why are we doing this on uh, even today? I mean, I don't consider it a Sunday as in S-U-N, uh -huh. a pagan son. I think of it as S-O-N. Good one. Fun day. This is the Lord's day. day. Jesus. The Lord's day. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. All right. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate you coming on. God bless.